Good evening. Uh, my name is Chandra Boyd. I'm the Senior Associate Curator of Education here at the museum, and it's my pleasure to welcome you this evening. Um, I'm looking forward to introducing Jason and hearing him talk. Anti-Gravity Material Light is the first exhibition in the museum's New Frontiers series for contemporary art. The series underscores the museum's commitment to the art of our time and recognizes contemporary art as a critical and dynamic part of our daily lives. The series will provide a framework for the exchange of ideas between the museum, artists, and the community while connecting to the international dialogue on contemporary art and new perspectives in the field. I will allow Jason to tell you more about himself and his work. However, I will mention that he received his BFA in sculpture from the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. In addition, he has had recent exhibitions and residencies in New York and Kansas, and was selected for Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts, The Light Project in 2008. Please welcome Jason Peters. I uh, wanted to thank the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City and the museum, especially for hosting the show and asking me to come. Glenn for asking me, and um, Ernesto, Chris, and Jim for being an amazing team and helping me get through it all and pulling it off. Um, Michael, Mick, and Jared for also coming. They're OU students without their help that, because I don't think if they had come, there was anyone else to replace them, so I've been really screwed. And um, then Stephen, who I think is still napping, um, because we worked long and hard to get this done. Um, Steve's turned into my trusty assistant currently and is invaluable, as I find out later. But um, I guess kind of about the show, just to put some stuff into perspective, is we basically had three weeks to fill the exhibition you're about to see, of which we spent only two weeks actually building artworks. The rest was, you know, paint, little things, walls, and stuff that needed to be worked out before I could even install. So it comes to about 250 hours for six individuals, including myself, or seven. So, you know, give it kind of perspective, because installation art is always a hard thing, I think, for people to wrap. They, you know, you walk in, you see the finished product, and you're like, hey, you know, here's artwork. It came in on a truck. And now this entire thing was built here on site, because for me, a lot of my artwork is based in being in a place and also seeing the environment, light, and other things to kind of come influence the work as it goes. So kind of this couple images, and that will kind of from way in the beginning to current and kind of try to display the process of maybe what I see in the world and how that comes along. Um, these early works are all during undergrad. And so things in piles excite me. This chairs, anything in mass, the idea being, you know, individual object as a building block. And so a brick is, you know, you build a building with, it's a rectangle, goes together very simply. But once you uh, make a more complex object, it starts to really get interesting on in how it expresses itself. And this I kind of threw in because my relationship to these crank ties I've had have opened up my way of doing large-scale sculptures really fast, short-term without destroying any objects. So I don't have to weld, I don't have to glue, I can tie, but a crank strap is a ratchet strap that basically pulls two ends together and you have a control of from 12 feet to two feet. So it gives you a lot of options. And so it's all kind of part of the process and this is kind of where these early installations started from. I saw this on the back of a truck and was so fascinated by the tension being held. So you have a very open object that is literally just held on a truck that's bouncing around the street with one tie that's putting so many pounds per square inch to keep it there. So that started getting me thinking, which led to this. Um, and just also being like, how do I make large works um, in a fairly short amount of time? Because I don't have, I don't, you know, this is in cla like a classroom. So in one night, I just went in, took all the chairs on the first floor, drug them into one room, and m made, made something happen that would really interact with the environment and kind of go more from the object into more of a spatial sense of environment and how that affects one. And like, as I'm building these, yes, there's the objects, there's a railroad tie, but the, uh, let me see if I can laser point. There we go. But it's the negative space, it's all the negative space that's around the sculpture. So the object is inherently 
is there, but I, I get really excited about what it does, which is what maybe we call air. The Japanese call it ma, and they build their buildings literally to surround energy. to shape but you never can really predict and let the material kind of really um, express itself. So in a way like giving a little object that's in repetition and creating a pattern of it, kind of a voice. So you have to put so you have to put a certain amount of effort forward to to create form but really dictate also what form it wants to take and or what it will submit to. Um, and so, like for me, also the, the going on thing of building blocks is a pattern. I mean, we're kind of creatures. We wake up every day, and you know, we get up, we go to work, and there's a path of life and experience. And how do we, you know, take on memory? How do we remember things? What and those little joys that you have, you know, from waking up and something extraordinary happening, but it's, it's personal to you. I mean, a, an easy way, another way of this kind of way of Memorizing things is the way we, um, you know, when you say for your first kiss. I mean, these are very strong emotional um, moments, and it's how you process and how that energy it goes into memory, and then how memory is created. And so these are also for me that kind of what they do for other people. I mean, for, for me, I make them because they you know, bring a lot of joy and happiness to me. But it's also, I guess, in other words, like the visceral experience of of life. And moments. And so, and all these things are basically you know, trying to work this out in a, in a visual sense that is also why I like to make them usually larger because objects that are bigger than yourself, you have a certain uh, size relationship to um, a red, it's like a redwood tree. You know, we all walk up and there's a very, very basic, you know, visceral reaction. We pretty much all have the same. Like, that's a really big tree. <laughs> then some people look at that's a lot of fire. And that would really hurt itself. And you know, these are different people, but it's the same object interpreted, but we all have access to that, that emotion and, and, and because it's, it's very personal and we compare it to ourselves. And so that's kind of you know where these things come for me and I try to then stay within that realm to help um you should have had that morning like a the movie theater. You guys have that on <laughs> file? Um, and so the, and it's, you know, the whole process of getting from you know, a single object, these were a show in Santa Fe, um, which were things I picked up from surplus stores, like the government surplus, so these are cots, crutches, and I started working with these tires, because like the early work, it seemed to be a lot of um, asymmetrical work, um, and I, I was getting tired of it, but I wanted some a new challenge, so I was like, well, let's go back to the basics. There's the, the sphere, the cube, and the pyramid. And that's like, well, how do, you know, the question was like, well, how do you make a large wall? I mean, how do you make something that's huge and cost effective? So you pick up tires because they're free, you know? <laughs> you have to pay to get rid of them. So, you know, the show, the show cost me you know, the removal. Everyone is willing to give it to you, but no one is willing to take it. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's, it's the process, I mean, saying like getting product, and I guess what I'm saying is all of this stuff's part of, for me, making art is meeting people, these funny little stories that come up. Like these buckets, you know, I hadn't, this is where it all started with the buckets, is I was basically driving through New Mexico looking for material, and I found, or I just saw a giant yellow gleaming. Thing in the far distance, so I started driving towards it. So like, there's a lot of something. Um, <laughs> so I get there, and you know, and then I find this bucket. So I talk to the guy who's a contractor, and we, you know, work it out. And he's like, "Well, what are you going to do?" And he's like, oh, "I don't know. What do you want for?" And I was like, "Well, give it to me." And he's like, "Sure, leave me twenty." And I was like, "Great." But then it was like, you know, now I have this object that has its own inherent qualities, and so I started playing with it. And then when you stick them in, out of each other, you get to a point where they still catch on and you can kind of have this radius of motion. And from there, I was like, kind of was reminded of those little snakes we had, or some people had when you were a kid. You know, you hold it at the end, and as it moves it, you know, the kinetic energy of your hand moves it into position. So 
was like, well, I'd do the same concept. You know, I'd put two screws, and once I like where I'm going, I'll put the other screws in to hold it in tension, and then keep going with it from there. And you know, it's it, again, it's like kind of like the biology of 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 humans. You know, we, we're really complex, but when you start to break it all down into little parts, it's much more um, manageable mentally. And so, to me, it's kind of the same system. I mean, you, you walk in and see, and it all is really. I mean, it's also trying to create that fantastical, but also with something that I can manage, and then with the help I have, and and all the other things that come with that. So, like these pillows were in a warehouse for forty years, and I, I, I got them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to find quantities of things because people are getting rid of it, but. At least from the 60s to like the early 90s, now 2000s, it's still doable. Forgotten lots, but even the government is like, "Well, we have an empty warehouse. Let's do something with it." So they chuck everything. So this is also kind of like involving process with the final product, which is, you know, usually the, you, these are the straps I use. These are the, the crank, the crank ties, or so they're. So I kind of like the way that you know they fall off, and then you know the repetition of circles. So of um, places and things, and I don't want to get in the way of that process. I want you to have as much from my point. I mean, I have my own things I want from it, but I'm always, I'm always tickled at what people come up with, and I'm like, jeez, I would have never thought of that, and you know, thank you. And it's, I think you know, when you can come to art and create something personal with it, you might actually remember that experience longer, like the way you, when you break a leg, you know, that was pretty severe. And, you know, but art hopefully doesn't hurt you in the same way. And it upsets people. I mean, you know, Giuliani wanted to get that show removed from the BAM, but, you know, it's over some dung. I mean, but to each his own. These are really small sculptures and kind of again taking you know scale because a lot of people see my larger work and in this show I also have some drawings to kind of also that are based on the larger work and these are actually 1 to 87 scale so you have to imagine each of these grocery carts grocery carts is an eighth of an inch tall so this thing only stands 2 inches and you know kind of playing with the the finite of of scale and object and they're really adorable. <laughs> but um, the gift shop does not have any, just so you know. <laughs> and you know, you can do things in this scale that you can't do. Crazy Glue does, allows you to do structural feats that only steel will let you do on large scale. And they're like, these are the handles. And so I've been trying to, you know, between recycling and buying things new, like in this show, like if I've had to purchase some things because I couldn't get the things I wanted. And, you know, not everyone keeps everything because most people have one bucket. So to find, like, you could put a call out and be like, I want every red bucket in Oklahoma City. You might only get so many. And then also, then you have to put them somewhere. So um, this is a piece that is in one of the pieces in here, and I guess tying it back into like sculpture form and object. Um, there was one slightly before that at the mattress factory, was the idea of to actually put an object in a, in a dark room, or as I had built some of these pieces by themselves, I really started to get in, more interested into the negative space and then wanted to push it. And then uh, between a dream and riding on the subway, which allows you to think a lot in New York, I suddenly was like, well, if I put a light inside this white object and put it in an absolutely dark room, I, I get exactly what I want. And what it also allows you to is that suddenly you get to walk around a sculpture and see it from all sides without extraneous you know, paintings in the background, other people's work, or whatever. You get a really pure, you're really alone with it, and it kind of feeds into you know, a whole other area in the brain. And these are actually the same work. Um, this is shot from a balcony down looking so the, the floor is in these three quadrants 